Hello, good day once again, fellow learners. This is your mentor, Ray. Ray Gapas, your fact check buddy, joining you in this teaching and learning session related to our NTEX RN focus, beginning with a specific concept. Let's start the year right. So I thank you for giving it an, a, a time and a space in your hectic schedule as you begin another year. And hopefully this is going to be a better year for all of us compared to what happened in the past two new years that we've had. So today we're going to start our discussion with our NTLEX focus and that's going to be diabetes insipidus and this small present. Now, you might be asking, diabetes insipidus sounds like diabetes mellitus. Well, in fact, even if both conditions are the same in terms of the term diabetes, they're actually two different conditions. So let's zero in on diabetes insipidus and one of the treatments which is actually used for this condition and that's your dismal present. So stick around and I hope you finish the video. This is a short one, but like any other videos we have in this channel, very meaty. Okay. So before we get through our discussion, let me start with today's good news. And here we have a comment coming from somebody who just passed the NCLEX last December 14. And she's from um, the Philippines, but she's currently working in Saudi Arabia. And her name is Ethel Bellinas. A shout out, congratulations, Ethel. So I'm going to translate what she actually has written on the comment section of our YouTube channel. Hi po Sir Ray, hello Sir Ray. Gusto ko lang po magpasalama sa inyo. I'd like to say thank you to you. Kung hindi dahil kay Papa God at sa videos niyo po, siguro di, ako, di ko maipasa yung exam. Had it not been for the Lord God, Heavenly Father, and you, I would not have been able to pass the test. Nahibig lang po ako nanonood ng videos niyo po. So I'm a silent watcher of your videos. Nahiya din ako mag-email sa inyo kasi baka hindi ako makapasa sa exam. Well, I'm a little shy about sending you an email message because I thought I may not be able, what if I may not be able to pass the test? Andito po ako sa Saudi ngayon at nag-exam ako ng December 14, 2021. So I'm currently here in Saudi and I had I took the test on December 14, 2021. Sa awan ng Diyos po, at pumasa po ako. With God's grace, I pass the test. Thank you so much po sa reviews nyo. Kay lumabas po yung lectures nyo sa exam. Your lectures came out in the test. Kaya parang confident ako maipasa ko yun. That's why I feel confident that I will make it. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Blessing po kayo para sa aming mga nurses. You're a blessing to us nurses. Lalo na po yung hindi masyadong pinag Pala, financially, especially those who are financially challenged. God bless you, Siri. My heart, hats off to you. And she has a PS postscript message. Student nyo po ako dati. I was your student before from Coleo San Agustin, Bacolod City. Thank you so much because you still get to remember me, your mentor. I know that was, what, a century ago? <laughs> That's all I am. But... Whatever generation you're in, I just hope that functional concepts, which I actually created to facilitate the nurse's comprehension and understanding of concepts in a more simple way, be able to help you out, prepare, and ace that test on your first try. So join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NREX RN application and review to 100 nurses, those who are part of our scholarship programs. Two of them just recently passed again the test. My hats off again to those who just passed the test. Congratulations. To help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. That's all I ask of you. Don't skip the ads. And thank you in advance for doing so. So let's try going back to the question and related to the concept that we're going to talk about today. So here's a simple question. Which of the following outcomes in a patient with diabetes insipidus indicates positive response to treatment with this mopresine. Now, there are three things that you have to remember about this question. One is that you have to have a thorough understanding of what is meant by outcomes. So that means to say, you're supposed to be checking on the client's response to treatment. So this is the evaluation phase of the nursing process. Okay. Second, you have to know about diabetes insipidus and what causes it. 
And third, you have to know how this morpresin is used as a form of treatment and how to evaluate its effect in a patient with diabetes insipidus. That's quite a lot to digest. So when you're already seated in front of your computer and then you're faced with this type of question, and then if you're going to get uh, um, read through the options, you're gonna go through some values. And that's, most of us nurses hate when we deal with numbers, but, Despair not because we have a guide. So let's call in our functional concepts. Diabetes insipidus is due to a deficiency of antidiuretic hormones. So the key to answering the question is understanding the basic pathophysiology of diabetes insipidus. And that would mean identifying the main function of your antidiuretic hormone. So let's proceed. Your antidiuretic hormone is produced by the hypothalamus and it is released by the posterior pituitary gland. So what does it do? It induces water retention. So what happens if you are deficient in antidiuretic hormones? So your body will not be able to retain water. So in essence, in diabetes insipidus, the deficiency in antidiuretic hormone leads to excretion of large amount of urine. And because you are losing urine, that could lead to excessive thirst because the thirst center in the brain would be triggered because your body is getting deficient of fluids. Now that we have a simple understanding of what happens in diabetes insipidus, let's move on. The normal urine output per day in adults is one to two liters. That is if you have a normal amount of antidiuretic hormone. But what happens when your body doesn't have antidiuretic hormones, uh, just like in the case of diabetes insipidus, which means your body would lose up to 21 liters of urine per day. So some literatures would say there's an average loss of 19 to 20 liters per day, but your patient with DI, diabetes insipidus, could lose as much as 21 liters of urine per day. Now, the normal urine-specific gravity is 1.005 to 1.030. Now, there are some literatures that identifies the normal specific gravity as 1.010 to 1.025. Pay particular attention to this detail. If the urine-specific gravity goes down below 1.005, that simply means that your kidney is not retaining the urine to concentrate it, which means there is excessive loss of water from the body such that the urine specific gravity has already gotten so low. So a very low specific gravity could potentially indicate a diagnosis of diabetes insipidus, okay? So the normal urine osmolarity is 500 to 800 milliosmoles per kilogram of water. Now, there are a lot of students who would usually ask me, um, what do you mean by osmolarity? So it means the concentration okay, of fluid in the body. So how is that different from osmolality? So the difference is when you say osmolarity, it refers to the amount of solute per liter okay, of solvent. When you say osmolarity, osmolality rather, it pertains to the amount of solute per kilogram of solvent. So whether it's osmolarity or osmolality, both means or refer to concentration. Okay, both refer to concentration. The difference is, once again, osmolarity refers to the amount of solute per liter of solvent and osmolality refers to the amount of solute per kilogram of solvent. So I hope that clarifies the issue. Pay particular attention to the normal urine osmolarity. Okay, so since this is osmolarity, so that's 500 to 850 milliosmol per kilogram of water. Now this morpresine is a synthetic ADH. Okay, it's a synthetic antidiuretic hormone. It's usually given intranasally. It controls too much urination. So how would you know that your dismopresin is effective? Two things. First, 
the patient's urination will be decreased. And second, the kidneys will be able to concentrate your urine by retaining fluids. Therefore, the specific gravity goes up. So what would be your parameters for evaluation for the effect of this mopresine? The urine output should go down, the specific gravity should go up, and all the other values should be normal. Okay, now having those functional concepts in mind, let's try answering the sample question. Which of the following outcomes in a patient with diabetes insipidus indicates positive response to treatment with dismopresin? Urine output of 19 liters per day, this is too much. This means the dismopresin is not, take, uh, it's not exerting therapeutic effects. So urine output of one to two liters per day, we said a while back, this is normal. Urine specific gravity of 1.015, this is between 1.005 and 1.030, which we identified by identified a while back as the normal range of specific gravity. So we put a check. Urine osmolarity of 600. Okay, once again, this is normal. And deep amber colored urine. Now take note that in diabetes insipidus, the urine, because it, it is excreted in large amounts, become pale. So um, that would mean that if you have pale urine, that could be indicative of diabetes insipidus. But the fact that you have a deep amber colored urine, this is indicative of normal urine. And frequent urination at night or nocturia, once again, this is indicative of diabetes insipidus, not a positive response to the small precinct. So I just hope that with the functional concepts we've discussed, you're able to answer this question correctly. And if you have other requests that I, you would want me to cover in my future videos, let's learn together. Send in your request to my email, mentor.raygapples at gmail.com. And I would also like to invite everyone. I'd be having a free NPLEX Quick Fix on January 14, 15, and 16. Um, that begins at 7.30 p.m. Philippine time. So those of you who are interested, you just have to send me an email so I can send you the requirement and the link if you are qualified to join the class. So this has been your mentor is saying, a functional concept a day keeps your NPLEX RN fears away. See you in our next video. So if you love this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit the like and bell notification button so you get notified when we upload a video. And we do that regularly at least once a week. Once again, this is your mentor Ray saying, let's have a happy new year this year.